artists. A DJ is one of the most valuable people you can have in your corner. Think about it. Just getting your song played by a DJ like Four Corners, the official DJ of the Toronto Raptors basketball team, would expose your song to almost 20,000 fans in a single sitting. That's a lot of people taking in your song at one time. And we're not even considering that being repeated night after night or your song being played by them in other locations, such as on the radio or at bars or clubs or even on television. That means that a DJ is an indispensable marketing partner that you want on your side and the only way to get them on your side is to give them what they need to play your song in the form of a DJ pack. A DJ pack is essentially a bunch of versions of your song packaged together that'll allow the DJ to have what they need so they can play your song in any setting. Typically this includes an explicit version, a radio edit, the instrumental, the acapella, an 8-bar DJ intro outro, and the cover art. I'm gonna break down what each of these versions contains specifically so you know exactly how to create a DJ pack so you can get your music played. In case you don't know who I am, my name's Five Piece. I'm a producer and engineer based in Toronto and I help music creators like you sound better and get paid through your music with videos like this one. If you're new here, please consider subscribing as I drop a new piece of content just like this every single week. With that being said, let's actually talk about the different versions you're gonna to wanna to create and include in your DJ pack and to make things easier for you guys, I've timestamped everything so feel free to jump around this video if it's helpful for this video i'll be using oguilla by the aforementioned four corners featuring my brother everything oshan so let's get into it first up we have the explicit version this is pretty much self-explanatory it's just your song as is swearing explicit content everything where it is no changes and djs that play in settings that don't require any sort of censorship so like clubs bars and places that are frequented by adults they're gonna have no issues playing this in those environments however not every setting will permit an explicit version of a song and that leads us to the radio edit you can't really play explicit content at a basketball game or on tv or on the radio where children and younger audiences might be around. So for those settings, you wanna have a radio edit or a clean version as it's often referred to as as well. And that ultimately removes all the explicit content, okay? Not just the swearing. I think a lot of people get obsessed with that, but you're getting rid of anything that could be explicit. So sexual references, drug references, any type of adult content, and even sometimes things that are not necessarily any of those things, but sound like it. I've had to actually edit songs at times where there isn't a swear, but it kind of sounds like one and then because of that radio stations or certain places that we've been submitting the songs to won't play it because there's just that risk that somebody might interpret it that way so to be safe we still remove the swear or what sounds like a swear in this instance now i shot a video a while ago about how to create a radio edit i definitely recommend you guys check that out after watching this video because it'll help break down exactly what you should be mindful of what you should consider removing and how to ultimately approach creating that clean version of your track next up we have the instrumental this is obvious this is just a bounce of your instrumental so all your instrument sounds without any vocals now just to be clear if your instrumental contains vocals so if it has a choir sound if it has a vocal chop or some sort of vocal sample that's really ingrained in the beat that stuff is obviously okay to leave but you're not going to have any lead vocals choruses ad-libs all the vocal stuff the acapella stuff that's going to be muted and you're just going to have the instrumental or the beat in this case so just to show you what i mean i'll play a moment of the radio edit so you know what this sounds like and then i'll switch over to the instrumental in real time Now, the purpose of giving the DJ the instrumental is to give them the option to create their own DJ intro and outro. Now, I will be talking about this a little bit more in a coming section, but ultimately, we want to just give them options because maybe what you provide them in the actual DJ pack is not what they want to use, and they're going to find another part of the arrangement from the instrumental that they like to use for transitional purposes. Building on that, giving DJs access to the instrumental is really good for DJs who are into remixing or creating mashups. This is a really popular thing that's happening on TikTok and Twitch, for example, and it can lead to some really cool and interesting creative possibilities and even content that you may not have thought about. A DJ might take your instrumental and blend it with another song, and that thing might go viral because it's just a unique combination. You should also be giving DJs access to your acapella in a DJ pack, and this goes twofold if you have an explicit song. You should give them the explicit acapella 
and the radio edit acapella or the clean version. That way they have the most amount of possibilities to use it. Now, the real reason why you want to use this ties into that previous point on the instrumental. You want to give DJs, especially those who remix and create mashups, the opportunity to use your vocals in conjunction with something else. Now, this is something we saw recently with St. John. St. John has a track called Roses, but the I'm in Beck remix actually ended up going viral and becoming a really, really big track, much bigger than the original version of the song. And ultimately, that's why we want to give DJs access access to this so they could potentially create a viral moment for us. Now to show you what this sounds like. Body, body, I do not go for me, yeah. Moto, moto, okay, go, bring the key, yeah. Fifty, fifty, I should not go, agree, yeah. Eh, she won the all tonight, but... So this is pretty straightforward. We got the vocal only with the effects that ultimately relate to that vocal, the reverbs, the delays, etc. but none of the instrumental elements, no drums, no basses, no leads, none of that stuff, simply just the vocal. And because this song does have explicit content, we do have two acapellas, one being the radio edit, the other being the explicit version. Next, we have the eight bar DJ intro and outro. And for the longest time, I had no idea what this was. I used to actually think it was legitimately an eight bar loop that you had to give the DJ and they would somehow work it into the set with the actual track. That's actually not what it is. And I realized that I was creating more problems for people by providing that. Thankfully, Four Corners helped me figure out exactly what I should be providing. And I'm gonna share that with you right now. The eight bar DJ intro and outro is actually your full song, but with one caveat. And that is that it's going to have an eight bar intro and outro. So that way the DJ can blend into your song and out of it, transitioning between the one before and the one after, of course. Now, the thing is what you want to use for this eight bar DJ intro and outro is a rhythmic section. So you're not going to have just a stripped down piano, but instead you want to have a part where the drums, the bass, and essentially the meat and potatoes of the song are. That way they can easily map and transition into it keeping the groove going and then moving out of it into the next song doing the exact same thing. So if you have a song that has a stripped down intro that has no rhythmic elements, you're gonna ultimately remove that and replace it with this. Or if it's already like that, you're gonna add just a little bit more so that way there's room for that DJ to blend between the two. Let me actually show you what I'm talking about here. And I've got my DJ intro and outro versions here, but the thing is these other versions, they actually line up. So the way I have it all set up is that the actual vocals and whatnot, they all start at the same time. So if I play this version and the DJ intro, wherever the vocal lands, that's exactly the same on both. But the difference is the intro on this one, the DJ intro and outro version, is obviously that rhythmic section that starts and continues throughout until the actual song begins. And then that continues afterwards towards the end. Whereas the original version of the song is obviously not as long, and it starts differently. The intro is not the same and the outro is not the same, right? So let me just play this version first. You can hear exactly how it starts and ends, and then I'll compare it with the original version and you can see the difference between the two. Okay, so you get the idea. That's the DJ intro so far. Now let me actually compare it to the intro of the regular version. Should be pretty obvious. The original track starts with a bass, there's no drums, and then it obviously drops pretty quickly. Whereas this one, there is that whole long-winded intro, of course, but the whole purpose that exists is so that way a DJ can blend into it. Let's now compare the ending of the song. I'll start by playing the ending of the actual radio edit here. So that's how it ends. It's pretty abrupt, right? Well, now let's do the same exact thing, but listen to the DJ intro and outro version. You're going to hear it continues and doesn't end there. Dance, gotta make some more mula Make some more mula Shake it for you. Mm -hmm. 
I'll cut it there because it obviously continues, but you can tell this is really just an alternative arrangement. There's additional stuff at the beginning, additional stuff at the end, and it's really important to make sure that when you're doing this DJ intro and outro stuff, you're choosing a section of your song that's the main drop part. So usually it's the hook, to be honest. You're gonna choose the hook and have that be placed at the beginning and the end, and of course, make sure that everything transitions smoothly and that there's no drop-offs in terms of energy. Now, similar to the previous points, if your song does have explicit content, you wanna have two versions of this. You wanna have a radio edit, and of course, the explicit version. Again, just giving DJs as many options as possible to be able to play your track in the appropriate setting. And finally, you wanna include the cover art. So I've got the folder here that all the files I've shown you live in, and ultimately, the Oguilla cover art is here as well. This is really just to provide DJs with a visual associated with your single. It also shows professionalism. It shows that you're organized and it gives the DJs options as they might have some visual systems that they want to show the cover art on while they're playing your song. This is a win-win for you. It's just going to allow you to get some more advertising as the DJ is already promoting your song while he's playing it. Now, I always recommend including a JPEG version because it's just simple. It's a file format that's going to work pretty much everywhere. So definitely do that when creating a DJ pack. Now, you probably have a few additional questions about how to format this DJ pack pack, so I want to cover it here. Now, first things first, you might have noticed that I like to include both a WAV and MP3 version of every single file that I've shown you so far. Truth be told, I find most DJs use the MP3. It's much more compact. They have tons of music files on their computer. Storage is definitely an issue at times. And specifically for the DJs that are remixing, they're going to want access to the WAV files because it's typically a much more high quality file that's lossless. Another tip I can give is make sure all of your files are mastered. And this includes the instrumental, the acapella, you always want to make sure that that file is as loud as possible and running through your mastering chain. And this is really just to make sure that when a DJ transitions from another song into yours, there's relatively no volume loss. It's going to translate fairly well. And in saying that, you could tell that everything I've provided here is the same length, with the exception, of course, of the DJ intro and outro. Those are the same as each other, but not the same as the other versions. But the acapellas, the instrumental, the radio and explicit edit, they are all the exact same length. They start and end at the same time and that's what you want. You want to make sure that there's no inconsistencies or discrepancies in how long the file or the song is and that way everything lines up so if they choose to play one version over another they're going to be okay. Now organization wise you want to make sure that every single file you provide is clearly labeled okay. Make it easy for the DJ once again. You don't want to be sending them audio underscore zero one. That's not a good look for you and if you're making it difficult for them they're probably not going to play your song. So instead just give them everything they need and make sure they can easily tell what it is. In my case, you can see here, every single track is labeled. It says who the artist is, the title, and then it says what that version is. Explicit acapella, explicit with DJ intro and outro, explicit, instrumental with tag, instrumental, etc., etc. You get the idea. I want to make sure that DJ could clearly cue this up without any second guessing and just know exactly what is on that file. And I'm trying to make it as easy for them as possible. And finally, include the tempo and key information. So what we're talking about here is the BPM, right? Include the BPM and the key in a separate note within the folder or even retitle the folder to include that information as well. And I do know that a lot of DJs have tools that'll help them uncover this information, but why not just make it a little bit easier for them and show them that you're really on top of things. That's how I like to think about it. If you give them reasons to help you by making it easier for them, then they certainly will, assuming that your song is good enough to play in the first place. I hope this video was helpful for you, and if you have any other questions about DJ packs, feel free to leave them in the comments below so I can chime in. If you haven't done so already, please smash that like button until it turns blue for the YouTube algorithm. And of course, if you're new here and still haven't subscribed, tap that subscribe button and the bell so you can get notified every time I drop a new video. I appreciate you guys for watching, and I'm looking forward to helping you again soon. Peace. Bye. Bye.